Let's say you're trying to calculate the voltage for a reaction, but in this case we want to know the cell potential when the oxidation and reduction half cell reactions involve different numbers of electrons. Okay, So let's consider one has one electron exchange and the other has two. This might be the case for silver and cadmium in a galvanic cell. So how would we go about this? Well, we still need to figure out which one gets reduced and which one gets oxidized. So let's start by writing down the standard reduction potentials for both of these half cells. Ag plus will pick up one electron to form Ag and the standard reduction potential for this reaction is 0 0.8 volts. Meanwhile, cadmium, cadmium's 2 plus, so it's going to pick up two electrons and form cadmium metal. And the standard reduction potential for this reaction is equal to negative 0 0.403 volts. Now, since cadmium is more negative, we know that it's the one that's going to get reversed and become the oxidized one. So let's go ahead and write that. Cadmium metal will be now oxidized to form cadmium 2 plus ions and two electrons. Therefore, the now it's going to become the standard oxidation potential, since it's written as an oxidation reaction, is positive 0 0.403 volts. We just flip the sign on that. Now the problem is, what if we tried to combine these together right now? If we combined it, we'd have two electrons right here, but we only have one electron. So the electrons wouldn't cancel out, and these have to cancel out in these reactions. So what do we need to do? We need to multiply this. This gets multiplied by two. We do not multiply this by two. You do not do that. I know that we did that in free energy calculations. You do not do that in electrochemistry. That's one of the big differences here. Um, the reason why is we often think of voltage as a potential difference. So think of like a waterfall. The, the energy of that waterfall is like the height from the top to the bottom that it falls. Okay. So if you're doing two electrons in this reaction, you aren't changing the overall height of the waterfall, you're changing the amount of water flowing off of the waterfall. So the current has increased with more electrons, but the, the potential difference is the same. So that's just something you have to remember. Anyways, we multiply this by 2, and we get this following equation. 2 Ag plus, plus 2 electrons, plus cadmium will yield cadmium 2 plus, plus 2 electrons, plus 2 silvers. We see that this, the electrons now cancel on both sides of the equation, and we can go ahead and figure out the cell potential for this reaction. The overall cell potential, delta V naught, is going to be equal to those two values added together, which I see as uh, 1.203 volts. 1.203 volts. The fact that it's positive tells us that we did this correctly. That means this is a spontaneous reaction. But remember, the actually measured voltage, V, delta V, is different than delta V naught because delta V naught is just under standard conditions of 298K and equal molarity on both sides. If we want to modify it to account for those uh, differences in temperature or different in concentration, then we do the following. Minus RT, the gas constant times temperature, divided by NF. N is the number of electrons in the reaction. That would be 2, right? F is Faraday's constant multiplied by the natural log of the reaction quotient. Now, reaction quotient is always products um, over reactants. But in this case, we'd said previously that for solids and liquids, that the activity is just equal to 1. And so the term would go to 0. Here, it is solids and liquids, but these are ions in solution. So their activity is not 1. Instead, we use the concentration of our dissolved species. That's this one here and this one here. Those are both dissolved species, so we're going to use the concentrations of those. It's going to be the concentration of the products, so the concentration of cadmium 2 plus over the concentration of silver plus. And then one last thing to remember is that we have to put a 2 up here. That, that term has to be squared. Why does it have to be squared? Well, because there's 2 moles of silver. Just like we did with any other reaction quotient, the number of moles out front becomes an exponent here. So that's how you do uh, these types of reactions where you can calculate the voltage for this cell when there are half cell reactions which involve different numbers of electrons, 1 and 2, but you could do it for 2 and 3. You'd have to multiply the 2 by 3 and the 3 by 2, so the overall change of electrons would be 6. But that's the approach for these types of problems.